Hi everyone, Nathan here again with another True Tech Troubleshooting tutorial. Today we have an email question that's come in concerning if-then statements in JavaScript using Lifecycle to have conditional events happen. So in other words, if a button is clicked, what might happen? And here's, here's the email I received from Holly. I have a button that when clicked, I want a new date and a new comment field to appear. I don't want I don't know what kind of statement would be used to accomplish this. How do you write in JavaScript, quote, when clicked, have XX appear? Haven't been able to find a video to explain this, but if you have one, feel free to point it out and I'll watch it. Thanks again. So there isn't a video on this, and that's because I haven't made one. So I thought it would be a good time to do that. And Holly here has the basic logic of an if statement correct. She just doesn't know how to start the statement. And so we're going to show her and all of you how to do that in a form that mimics what she's doing here in this this question. So let's start by building a form. I have a blank form here with a couple of header footer objects and I'm just gonna come and change the name. It's always good to change the name of your your um, objects from untitled to something. This is something that comes up a lot in questions or programming and the reason for this is it's very hard in JavaScript to deal with any objects that aren't named. You can, but it's an ugly resolve node script you have to write, and it's just easier to name them and, and use their names. And so we have our main page, and we're going to just drag a button, command button, and we're going to call it click me, and then we'll rename the button from the automatic name to something more intuitive. Like that. And then we're going to create a date field. And what else did she ask for? A comment field. So we're just going to take a, a text field and we'll make it a big, a big comment type field, like she's saying. Just just to stick with her example. So we'll make it big. We'll allow multiple lines. We'll change the layout to no caption. And then we'll take away. Uh, the sunken box look and make it none and then we'll in our paragraph tab we'll go top oriented like that so now to preview the form we have a button that does nothing when we click it we have a date field that works and we have a text field that allows comments so we have what we want to start off we built a simple form alright so now what we want to do is we want to hide these two objects because in Holly's example, she wants uh, the button, the action of the button, to make them appear. And so under Object tab, I need to go to, oops, I need to go to Presence and Hidden. So what I did is I clicked and dragged, drew a square around the two objects. You could also just go to the hierarchy and select both of them by touching the Shift button and left-clicking on both. And we've changed their Presence, which is under the Object tab, to Hidden. And some people might ask, what's the difference between invisible and hidden? Invisible, in your design view, you still see uh, these outer borders. And then in your preview mode, you see nothing. Um, and the main difference is in a flowed form, hidden would give back the real estate. So in other words, if you had objects that were stacked on top of each other and were flowed, if you hide them, they would completely go away from the layout and any objects below would move up whereas if they're invisible they re they re they retain their real estate footprint as we say and the the objects below them would remain in, in their original places that's the difference between, the, between those two okay so now we've hidden the two objects and now we need to do, to create the magic under the click me button and in order to do that, we have to open the script editor. So uh, under Window, you can click on Script Editor. And normally, it'll pop out of the top here. Of course, I always recommend that you use dual screens when you're scripting because it's very hard to deal with a scrunched up design palette here. But for the sake of this video, we can only use one screen. OK, so we have the, we have the command, or the, the CMD click object selected. And we have the script editor open. And we want to come up here 
we want to choose the event we're scripting. And in this case, it's going to be the click event. And that's a very common one we'll be, we use a lot in all our videos. Another one is exit for like drop downs. When, when you exit the drop down or when, when you choose something, you want something to happen. And this, this event, click, is the most commonly associated with buttons. All right, so when we choose that, we get this blank white screen with line numbers. And of course, you can turn on line. If you don't see line numbers on, our, on yours, you can right click and show line numbers. And then we get um, this main event that we're inside. So we're form1.main.commandclick or colon click, meaning we're inside the code for the click event of this one object. So clicking anywhere else on this form will do nothing. Clicking on this will do whatever we say here. And of course our language is going to be JavaScript. We're not using form calc. And this really doesn't matter too much, but I always have run at client. That just means the code will execute on the client's machine, not some server. And again, it doesn't apply to designer. It only applies to lifecycle server. All right, and so now let's put in the code from Holly's question because she had a lot of it right. Let's just go ahead and copy and paste that code in to avoid having to retype it. All right, and so as you notice, some of the words turn blue. Some of the, some of the text turns blue like else. And we're going to just comment this out by hitting slash slash. In JavaScript, the double slash means comment. It ignores whatever's behind it. So we're going to put that off to the edge. And she has in her object names here a little bit more parent child objects. And we're just going to get rid of those. And we're just going to say main on all of this just to be consistent with what our hierarchy has. So everything we have, all our objects are under the main subform. So let's get rid of that. And then just uh, to live with her example, let's rename our objects according to this code. So idate2, let's name our date field idate2. And let's name our text field comment to. All right, and that makes her code now workable. And I got to get rid of this intervention one. That's a subform that she created in one of her forms. All right, we've gotten rid of that. And so now her code is basically exactly right. All she needs then is that first starting statement. And I think a a good suggestion here is to recommend to all of you a website w3schools.com. So uh, this is what I use to do any kind of JavaScript reference. It's a great website. It's, it's straightforward. It has some advertising on it, but it's free. And so instead of going out and buying an expensive reference book for JavaScript, if you just need an answer to a question like this, I recommend going to w3schools.com, and it'll show you the syntax for JavaScript and, of course, a lot of other, other languages if you're interested in it. And so the basic syntax of an if statement is the keyword if, lowercase, parenthesis, some kind of condition, and then an opening bracket or an opening brace. And she already has the brace. We just need to reformat a little bit. I like to put it there. It doesn't really matter. And then I like to put spaces. just to maintain some consistency. But she has the basic idea right. Um, if a condition is true, then idate2 and comment2 are visible. If it's not true, else, then make them hidden. And so we have to think through the logic of they're starting off hidden, and only if the condition exists do we make them visible. So now we see a problem emerge in the logic of this whole idea. There really isn't any condition we can define right now where things should be visible or hidden. We've already clicked the button. Clicking the button got us to this code. And so the condition when clicked has already occurred. It, it's, it's, it makes no sense to test for that again. We know what's happened. And so really an if statement here is counterintuitive unless we have some other kind of object that we can test a condition of to make the click um, effective, should we say. 
So let's let's hide this and do that just to, for an example. Again, I probably wouldn't program a form this way, but just for the example and for the question and to answer maybe other questions that come up. Let's let's play out this entire scenario. Let's let's go and choose a checkbox and put it right beside. All right, we'll put it right beside the click me button, and we'll just call this checkbox one, and it'll have two values on and off zero and one. All right, now we have something we can use as a condition. We can say in our code, if checkbox one equals one, meaning it's checked, then make the thing visible, and then if not, do something else. So let's put that in there. Checkbox dot value raw value equals equals one then make the things visible now why did I put two equal signs this is huge this is uh, bells go off really important don't miss this equals equals is different than just a statement that has equals and the difference is very important when you're testing for a condition equals equals basically means in JavaScript test to see if it does equal this one equal sign means set the value to be equal to so if we would just leave this as one equal sign we're assigning the checkbox the value of one not testing it to see if it is one and that will create a bug in the code which will cause all kinds of screwy things to happen and you'll never be able to figure it out until you go through your entire code line by line and figure oh wait a minute I forgot to put the double equals so in any kind of conditional statement you have to have two equal signs to test for equality if you want to test if it's not equal you put the exclamation point the not symbol and one equal sign and then there is is, is even a, a time in JavaScript where you use three equal signs but I'm not going to get into that that's more complicated okay and then I just noticed another thing that's wrong with the code we haven't tested for the right thing here or, I'm sorry we haven't made this object declaration correct what we're saying is form one dot main I date two equals visible I date two is an object and we want a particular characteristic of that object to be visible if we assign visible to the object itself well, that will return an error so we need to put a dot presence after that we want the presence characteristic to be visible not the object itself in object oriented programming you have properties methods and events and we're setting the value of a property here the presence property and so if we try to set a value of the object itself it will return an error and then of course we can always click the check for syntax errors button just to see if anything turns red it didn't so it looks like we're good and now let's see if the form works click the button nothing happened because we haven't made visible let's check the box now and now things are visible if we uncheck the box and click again it hides them and so I hope this helps Holly I hope it helps anybody else that might have the same question but the big thing here is to remember is um, when using if statements you have to have a condition and click condition in this case has already been established and so it doesn't make any sense to use the click as a condition for the if statement there has to be some other condition that we're testing for after the click because the click has happened and so maybe a better way to write this without the conditional statement is to not have the if statement at all and just on the click make the thing visible uh, or on the click test for something else to make it visible and if that other thing isn't true then hide it anyway I hope it helps Keep the questions coming. Thanks, Holly, for your question. And remember that IT problems are usually simple, but they're never easy. We'll see you next time.